Welcome to the Trauma Resuscitation Checklist Training. This short training course provides instructions on how to use the checklist during trauma resuscitations. This checklist is meant to be a tool to benefit the entire trauma team by improving communication, improving situational awareness, and reducing team errors. The items on the list are things that should be done for all trauma patients and are arranged to match the natural flow of the trauma resuscitation. The checklist should remind you of the things that are often missed during the resuscitation. It should help reinforce what you already do when leading a resuscitation rather than feel like an additional task. Please use this checklist during every resuscitation regardless of activation level. It will be included in the charge nurse's packet of forms and printed on yellow paper. There is a clearly labeled clipboard available for you to use. At the end of the resuscitation, please place the patient label on the checklist and place it in the drop box in the hallway outside the trauma bays. The checklist is not a part of the medical record and should not travel with the patient. Now let's take a look at the checklist itself. Here is the checklist. You'll see there's a pre-arrival section to be done before the patient arrives. Then there's a primary survey section, a secondary survey section, and a departure plan section that should be completed before the patient leaves the room. We would like to point out a few important features of the checklist. If you arrive after the resuscitation is underway, locate the checklist and pick up wherever the team is in the evaluation. After the initial exam is over, you should go back and confirm that all items from both the primary and secondary survey sections have been completed. You do not need to go back to the pre-arrival section if the patient is already in the room. There are action items throughout the checklist that team members other than the junior resident should carry out. You should communicate directly with the person responsible for performing these tasks, rather than speaking to the room at large. Please do not check the box for the action item until the task has been completed. You may need to prompt someone to begin a task and then later go back to check the box once the task is completed. There is a box for the vital signs at the bottom of the primary survey section. Please be sure to note the values on the monitor screen and consider whether they make sense for both the age and status of the patient. If the vital signs are not normal, you should have the team manually reassess the patient in addition to troubleshooting the equipment. Abnormal vital signs should not be automatically attributed to equipment malfunction. If a value is not displayed on the monitor, you should prompt the team to check the placement or connection of the leads and monitors. You will notice that some items in various sections are shaded and have a checkbox for not applicable. These items are usually only needed for higher acuity or attending level activations, so you can check the not applicable box for most stat and transfer activations. If the patient's condition worsens during the resuscitation, Remember to refer back to these shaded high acuity items. We will now explain how to use the checklist during resuscitation. There are two methods to administer the checklist. The do list method, which is performed in real time as the resuscitation progresses, and the challenge response, which is a pause and recap method. You may choose which method you use to implement the checklist. In fact, you may use a different method for different sections of the checklist within the same resuscitation. The most important aspect of either method is that it is spoken out loud. Each item on the checklist should be announced, discussed, or responded to out loud so that the entire team can hear. The checklist is meant to be a tool to aid the entire trauma team. If you use it silently in your head, the rest of the team will not benefit. We will now discuss each method in a little more detail. In the do list method, the checklist is used to lead the team using a step-by-step -step approach. You should use the checklist in real time, either confirming and checking off items as the team completes them, or directing the team through the checklist items, or, if necessary, directing the team back to skipped items. Note that while you can use the checklist to direct team members, they do not need to wait to be told what to do. For each section of the checklist, it is important that every item in the section be completed and checked off before the team moves to the next section. Here's an example of a team using the do list method on the pre-arrival section of the checklist. This team is using an earlier version of the checklist. Some of the items in the pre-arrival section have changed, but the method remains the same. 
Team leader of emergency medicine up front. Ben Wright. Gary Wright, third year resident, physician Wright. Andrew, I can be physician airway. Emily Matthew Schmer. Carrie Nurse Lab. Carlos Charlie. Very good. So we have a five year old motor vehicle crash with loss of consciousness. It's a trauma status ending, I'm not sure why. Uh, five year old will estimate the weight um, 20 kilos. 20 kilos. Check estimated weight, check brief team on incoming patient. Uh, airway we've assigned roles. I mean, access will be Eugen, right? Mm -hmm. uh, primary survey will be Carrie, and the leadership will be me. Do, can we take any blood? Not yet. So we'll hold off on that. All right, oxygen? Yep. Suction? Check. Diagnosis? Check. Intubation train? Yep, 502. Are we ready with intubation medications? How many? Duck? Can you draw it up? Yep. Okay. We're ready with the defibrillator? Working. Good. Uh, CPR board ready if I need it, right? CPR board is here ready. Okay. Pre arrival plan is set. We're ready for the patient arrival. Note that this team missed the item for trauma shears. In the challenge response method, the team should conduct the resuscitation as they normally would, at their own pace and for memory. At the end of each major section of the checklist, you should call for a pause point, at which time the entire team should stop. You should then use the checklist to verbally confirm that all items in the section have been performed. You should call out each item in order and wait for someone on the team to respond that the item was completed. The response is simply a confirmation like, check or confirmed that the item was completed, and not a summary of the status or findings for that item. After a team member verbally confirms completion, you should check off that item and move on to the next item. Again, it is important that every item in a section be completed and checked off before the team moves on to the next section. Here's an example of a team using the challenge response method on the secondary survey section of the checklist. The resident has already completed the secondary survey exam and the team leader will now call for the pause point. So let's review the secondary survey and checklist. We have three, we have had done checklist. No. Okay. And the nurse will have some of our status on ID 204. Right here is clear. Left hand is clear. Left hand is clear. Okay. Bones. Check. Facial bone. Check. Nose. Check. Mouth. Check. Neck and deep line. Check. Check. Abdomen. Check. Right folia. Check. Cover experience. Check. Lower experience. Check. And then the rough line. Again, you may choose which method you use to implement the checklist in a trauma resuscitation. You may even use a different method for different sections of the checklist within the same resuscitation. When choosing a method, you might find that the experience level of your team affects which method you choose. For example, with a less experienced team, the do list method done in real time may be better than the challenge response method in which you pause and recap. In some cases, you might find that the circumstances of the trauma resuscitation make one method preferable over the other. You might also find that one method is better suited for certain sections of the checklist, or you may find that you have a personal preference. Whichever method you use, it is important to remember to state the items on the checklist out loud. If you have any questions or would like more information, please contact Dr. Bird or Jen Fritzine.